Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royce. I am super excited to continue our Decades mini series. In this short clip, we show why speed matters and the range of speeds that can be found in the web industries. We talk about nominal machine speed, mechanical and control precisions, as well as response times. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. If I were to ask you why you think machine speed matters, your initial reaction would be, well, duh. However, it is often good to be explicit and precise with language as we've done on this channel. Of course, speed has a large but not linear effect on productivity. It is not linear because the proportion of time spent on setup as well as waste tends to increase with speed. Of course, many processes are speed dependent. Drying probably comes to most people's minds first, but there are many coating, curing, cooling, polymer crystallization, and other concerns that are speed dependent simply because of chemical reaction time. Then we have the mega topic of drives. The master or pacer is probably the most straightforward. Feed forward is anything but. Speed control, sometimes called draw control, is quite complex. As we will see, the precisions need to be quite high for stiff materials. Let us start with the familiar web machine speed. I have been into more than 1,000 plants. I have seen machines running so slow that it is difficult to tell if the web is even moving. On the other hand, I have seen machines so fast that the web is moving at highway speeds. Examples at the slow end include textile looms and some specialty types of plasma deposition on metals. The paper industry is by far the fastest. Paper producing machines can run as fast as 5,000 feet per minute, and the rewinders that follow are far faster still. I set winding records of 10,000 feet per minute in my lab at Beloit way back in 1985. Now, production winder speeds in the paper industry top out at an incredible 12,000 feet per minute, which is more than 130 miles per hour, which is more than 200 kilometers per hour. I grew up with these kind of speeds, so they seem quite normal and no special challenge. In the next series, I will discuss two speed limits in web handling. Stay tuned. Because I was a machine designer in a previous life, I teach a bit of mechanical and control design in my award-winning and trademark Web 101 school that has been taken by 5,000 people. Excerpted here is an example for the precisions needed to safely use speed control on stiff materials such as dry paper. The first thing we need to know is the breaking strain, which is about 1% for dry paper. Then, as we learned in our Web 101 class, most webs want to run in the 10 to 25% of their breaking strength. We size torque and power at the high end, as shown here, precisions on the low end. That means a lightly tensioned paper will be elongated by only 0.1% when running in a web machine. If we have a set point of 0.1%, then our precisions should be better than one-tenth of that, or 0.01%. This means we need to know motor and thus roller RPMs to better than one part in 10,000. 
However, with encoder counts now in the millions, we can get that kind of precision at very small sampling or update periods. Of course, this also means that we need to know roller diameter to one part in 10,000. But that is not out of the ordinary for process rollers. The last item we will do here is to introduce the concept of drive response time. While it is well outside the scope of this clip to talk about any details, suffice it to say that there are likely to be two or three nested control loops. The outer loop is the feedback trim coming from a load cell or dancer. Beware that there are enormous variability in the drive world, so the numbers shown here are just examples. Let us start from the bottom, the response that you can observe yourself. While a typical time constant response of tension to a step change input is on the order of a second or a couple seconds, I just round it down a bit to one second or 1,000 milliseconds. To get this response, we may, may need to have the inner loop on the drive scan times on the order of 10 milliseconds. And there may be loops inside that I'm not even shown here, especially on servo drives. Those firmware loops may be running far faster still. In summary, to get the real-world tension response of, say, one or two seconds, the inner drive loop may need to be running 100 or even a thousand times faster. This is one reason that, historically, we have avoided doing any drive work in most PLCs. Most PLCs are typically not nearly fast enough for this work. The PLC, then, is merely supervisory, passing commands from the operator and returning samples of tension back to the operator. I hope you've enjoyed this episode on speed in this decade's miniseries. Stay tuned for next week's show where we will discuss the wide range of material behavior that can be found in web handling. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. See you next time.